Well, welcome to the Daily Brief on Metro Milwaukee's health and the economy, brought to you by the Medical College of Wisconsin and the Metropolitan Milwaukee Association of Commerce. My name is Tim Sheehy, president of the MMAC, and I'm joined by my co-host, Dr. John Raymond, president of the Medical College of Wisconsin. Each day at 3.30, we bring you a 19-minute fact-filled uh, program on the impact of COVID-19 on the health and, econ and economy. Uh, today's webcast is powered by Aurora WDC. And again, our special guest this Friday is Mayor Tom Barrett. So Dr. Raymond, let's start with a healthcare update. Thanks, Tim. And it's great to be here with you and Mayor Barrett today. And good afternoon, everyone. Yesterday, there were only 49 new COVID-19 positive tests in Milwaukee, but a new high of 304 in Wisconsin. And recall that on Wednesday, we had 225 new cases in Wisconsin. And yesterday, we had 207, and those were three of our largest daily increases thus far. And I did express some concern about this trend, but I note that our testing capacity has increased significantly this week, and the number of tests that we actually administered has grown as well. For example, we exceeded 2,000 for the first time yesterday and exceeded 3,000 for the first time today. So um, this may be something that bears some uh, consideration going forward, but I think it's a good sign that we're enhancing our ability to test where it's needed. Our average daily growth rates calculated using all of the data since March 12th continue to improve to 5% in Milwaukee and 6% in Wisconsin. And the seven day average daily growth rate was 2.7% in Milwaukee and 4.1% in Wisconsin. And that continues a trend of slight improvement in Milwaukee and slight worsening in Wisconsin and the doubling times continue to improve to about 14 days in Milwaukee and 11 and a half days in Wisconsin. If I could go to the next slide, please. This slide shows the daily new COVID-19 cases in Wisconsin since March 12th. And as you can see, there was some leveling off with the possible beginnings of a decline until Wednesday when our new cases rose for the last three days. Again, this increase might be due in part to a large increase and enhanced testing, but there may also be a significant increase in new COVID-19 positive cases independent of that testing. If we could go to the next slide. This slide shows the daily average doubling times in Wisconsin since March 18th. And as you can see, these have continually improved. If we were to graph Milwaukee, it would look slightly better. So we continue to have progress. Now, up to this point, I think the data that we provided have been very useful, especially the trend analysis. Going forward, though, because of the rapidly increasing availability of COVID-19 virus testing and probably the new availability of serological testing, we might need to rethink what data are crucial for us to follow. I promise to consult with MMAC leadership about what's most relevant for us as we move forward with a smart restart of our economy. So please stay tuned and expect a different and somewhat enhanced data set. Now, if I could just digress for a moment to talk about the Medical College of Wisconsin. As you know, we're an anchor institution in the region and we're both a source of medical knowledge, but also a business. In fact, we're the seventh largest employer in the region. And we're not immune to the economic pre pressures that are afflicting all of you. As many of you know, we furloughed 700 people effective yesterday and implemented a broad array of expense mitigation measures that were much more severe than what was necessary during the recession of 2008 and 2009. So like you, I want you to know, we're very eager to get back to work as well as we begin to prepare for the new normal and we transition through a smart restart. So thanks again for your attention and leadership and I'll send it back to Tim. Yeah, Dr. Raymond, thank you very much. And I can only imagine how challenging that is. And lots of employers are going through this very difficult uh, position of having to furlough and, and lay off people. So um, two questions for you, though, before I get to Mayor Barrett, as we look ahead to next week, and we've talked about this, as testing has come online, um, a better measure of that may be what? The percent of those tested uh, that test positive? I think we need to look at both, Tim, and I'm really pleased to say that the DHS website now tracks the percentage of positive tests, so that's readily available to the public, and I would encourage people to take a look at the website. There's a wealth of useful information there. 
And then the other piece we talked about, which is going to take on increasing relevance um, as we start to look at the impact of COVID and maybe a flattening, is do our hospitals here in southeastern Wisconsin have the capacity now, given the number of positive tests that are out there, to handle that? So what would you be looking at, uh, kind of PPEs, ICU use, um, just overall use of hospitals? Yeah, Tim, and these are concepts we talked about before in the daily brief and also during the weekly webinars. Um, hospital capacity, especially for ICU beds and ventilators, is important, but the personal protective equipment is going to be a limiting factor for the ability of our healthcare systems to resume full operations. Thank you. Um, Mayor Barrett, just a couple opening questions for you. Um, what's your sense now, uh, weeks into this, how is the city progressing? What's What's your sense of that? Well, I can tell you that in terms of the healthcare perspective, I think that we are making progress. We want to go even faster. This week, probably the best news, and you'll hear more about this at the beginning of next week, is we've got five federally qualified uh, um, health centers. These are the FQHCs, and they are beginning their testing. So there are two on the south side, two on the north side. The state has changed its testing um, criteria, so now individuals who are showing symptoms can be tested. That, that's a, a change, and I think that's a welcome change because every, every indicator I've seen is the more testing that we can do, it helps on two fronts. It helps first on the healthcare front so that we know exactly where we are and we can isolate those individuals who are testing positive, and then we can do the tracing and the tracking that's necessary so that they don't spread the disease even further. But the second part, and, and I don't say this lightly, is I really think that the testing is one of the keys that is going to allow us to unlock the business doors. Um, and I know that's important to you and that's important to your members. I think all of us want to get this over with yesterday, yesterday. And, and the more quickly we can deal with those issues, that's going to, that's going to be something that is going to benefit all of us. So you've got, you've got the healthcare crisis, you've got the economic crisis. Just as the medical college is talking about what STEPS is taking from a personal personnel standpoint, um, we're going to be facing those same issues in the in the next hours in the city of Milwaukee because we're seeing our revenues dropping significantly as well. The fourth place where I've seen an impact that concerns me greatly is in the education realm because it's so uneven in terms of what the kids throughout this region are able to access. Uh, in terms of the quality of information and the internet connectivity, which is a big issue for some parts of the city as well. So I think we're progressing a lot more work to be done, clearly a lot more work to be done. So as, as you kind of look to strike the balance and not that there are mutually exclusive goals between kind of health uh, in the economy, um, how, how do you look out ahead? Uh, it, it, do you, you know, if, if the state date comes in earlier, does the city move in that direction? How do you think about progressing from kind of a safer at home to the next phase? I think that's going to depend on how the state does it. Um, if the state is working on a bipartisan basis to do this, um, I think it's likely we're going to do it. Um, I am concerned. I think you've seen this in Georgia, where the governor got way out in front in Georgia and opened up everything. And a lot of the local mayors were upset about this. Even President Trump said he thought he was going too quickly. I don't want us to take a Georgia approach. Um, I have concerns that it, that could happen. I hope it doesn't happen. Um, but I think that if, if it's done on science, we're, we're, we're open to it. We're open to taking the steps necessary. Um, I don't want it to be a politically driven decision. I want it to be a science driven decision. But again, I, I am mindful as everybody on this call is, the impact this is having on businesses and workers both. Yeah. And so kind of in that conversation, uh, where, where are we with this week? It seems like a little bit of different shifting perspectives on the DNC, whether it's going to happen, whether it's going to happen in the same way. What, what are your thoughts now, just looking ahead at the DNC based on what you know? Well, as you know, Tim, because you were very involved in this, there were a couple of well-meaning people this week who said, hey, let's just, let's just have this in 2024. Um, that would be analogous to saying the Bucks season ended early, let's just give them the championship next year. Um, because just as the Bucks are gonna have to compete on the floor, to get this convention, we had to compete for it. And there is nobody who's gonna say, oh, 
too bad for Milwaukee. We're going to give it to them in 2024. So anybody who thinks that that's going to happen, they should put that to the side right away. I still believe that we are going to see a convention here. We are going to see a convention where there's going to be Joe Biden nominated as, pres as, as a presidential candidate for the Democrats. What form that takes, I think that still remains to be seen. I think by the end of August, and I'm already seeing this, there are a couple of events that have come up that are going to occur, are scheduled near the end of August. So that's still four months away, essentially. That that can happen. Now, whether people want to travel, that's a different issue. But I still, in my in my most optimistic moments, would love to use that as a springboard to help our restaurants and our hotels bounce back. That's that's my goal. If we can pull that off, great. Again, there is going to be something that happens here. The Democrats are going to nominate their candidate here. That that I'm 100% convinced of. What what is going to be the most challenging aspect for you uh, in uh, balancing the city budget as we come back online? Uh, well, what we're seeing is we're seeing a, a loss in revenues, parking revenues, permit revenues, um, and what we are evaluating in real time, and that means I was doing it earlier this afternoon, is we're trying to see how the CARES Act allows us to have flexibility, just, just as other businesses are looking at it. We're looking at, at how we can utilize that in a way that preserves our essential services. At the top of that list, police and fire, um, obviously the garbage pickup, things like that, that's, that's at the top of the list. Going down from there, what we're looking at is seeing, okay, where, where can we recoup what might be $20 million over a, over a three month period and loss of revenue going further? So we're not the only one facing this issue, I guarantee it. Local governments are facing it all over and state governments are facing it all over. But I'm, I'm not crying. I'm just saying this is this is the issue that we have to deal with, and and we're going to issue we're going to deal with it, and we're trying to do it. I think as many of your members are in both the most economically and fiscally responsible way, but in the most humane way too. So you, that's that's the balance we have there. Thank you. So let's bring Dr. Raymond back on, and Chris, let's go to questions from the viewers. Sure. Uh, we did have a lot of questions about whether the uh, slide deck from today is available. Uh, if you look in the chat pane on the right side of your screen, uh, there's a Dropbox link where you can uh, download today's presentation. First, other question we had may be appropriate for all three of you. There's a group called Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, WMC, that has advanced a plan this morning that would allow businesses to reopen. Uh, we were wondering what each of you thought about that plan, realizing that MMAC has its own plan as well. Sure, maybe I'll start and then uh, bring Dr. Raymond in. Uh, I think it's a it's a plan that helps companies um, communicate uh, and plan in their own place of work uh, for um, sharing information again with their employees and their customers. Uh, and it's a very useful tool. I think that's part of uh, what needs to happen to get um, Wisconsin's economy uh, back on its feet. Yeah, if I could expand on that, Tim, you're, you're exactly right. It's an, it's an elegant tool. It's beautifully constructed with publicly available data. It's rational. Um, but I think there's some things missing that um, would benefit from the same kind of approach that the MMAC and that um, Badger um, Bounce Back Plan have. And that would be the ability to track trends, um, to have consequences for noncompliance, to have public health mitigation strategies, to incorporate testing and then educating the uh, the employees. Again, I, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm only saying that I believe there's a, a, a lot of utility there. It is thoughtful and really well developed, but I would put it into a larger framework. Another question we had was for Dr. Raymond. Dr. Raymond, when do you see widespread serological or antibody testing coming to Wisconsin? Um, within weeks. And maybe Mayor Barrett, I don't know if you have any more insight, but um, the Abbott test is going to be available and there are a number of other large international testing companies that are very reputable that have um, highly validated serological tests that I believe will be on the market extremely soon. And obviously we're hoping to take advantage with uh, our proximity to Abbott to have as much as we can here of that. Another question, why do you think Milwaukee is trending slightly better than some other parts of the state? Because of the mayor. 
Go ahead, Dr. Raymond. <laughs> I was going to say because of Mayor Barrett and Tim Sheehy, but <laughs> fair enough. Well, let, let me let me jump in there because I think we can all compliment each other. I, I will say this early on, and this goes back to before St. Patrick's Day, and that's an important day here in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, and I'm an Irishman, and to have bars closed on St. Patrick's Day was not an easy thing to do. Trust me. Um, and there was a lot of soul searching there. But I think that the decisions we made, which were very painful for us to take, were, in retrospect, they were the correct decisions to take. And again, I say that knowing that, that there were businesses that were affected. But it, it was a very intense period over that weekend as we were trying to decide, all right, what's the best thing to do? And, and what you did see is you, you did see some pretty dramatic steps taken. And, and I think that that's helped us. When we go back over a month now, when I first started looking at the rankings of states, we were number 17 in the number of cases that we have. Right now, we're, I think, number 25 or 26. And more importantly, on a per capita basis, we're at probably number 36 as a state. Now, it's more intense here, but we've done more flattening of the curve here now. And as you can see from what Dr. Raymond said, the, the growth is more in other parts of the state. So. So I think that we made some difficult decisions, but but what was helpful for me personally, quite honestly, was the backing of MMAC and the, and the encouragement from both Dr. Raymond and Tim and others to say, look, we're we're supportive. We we want and we recognize that action has to occur here. So so I thank both of you. Well, thank you. But that's the first time you made me cry as an adult when you closed the St. Patrick's Day down on me. Um, Dr. Raymond, you want to talk though a little bit seriously about what you've seen in the trends uh, and, and where kind of Milwaukee is and where you see the rest of the state. Yeah, earlier this week we showed some evidence that Milwaukee actually was doing better. Our, our region was doing better than the rest of the state. Um, obviously we were hit hard first and took it very seriously and intervened aggressively. And I think our doubling time started out much faster than the rest of the state, and now it's actually longer or better. Um, and our growth rates have slowed significantly compared to the rest of the state. So again, I think not only good leadership, but great education and cooperation from the public. As one final question, uh, we did have some people wondering about whether if we did see an effect from some of the protests in Brookfield and then again today in Madison, when would we see an effect? Around now. Um, and, and the data are conflicting whether there really has been an effect. Most, most of our metrics have been pretty flat. Great. Thank you to you all and thank you to everybody who asked the question today. But uh, thank you, Dr. Raymond. Um, appreciate again uh, your time on the program and look forward to kind of some renewed or updated uh, data sets uh, for next week. Uh, uh, Mayor Barrett, again, thank you very much for joining us and have a safe weekend. Thanks, Tim. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Mayor Barrett. Thank you.